Wow, that's uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Is the industry treating me any different? Um, actually, what I find is that people tend to be a uh, uh, I don't know. I guess uh, hmm. No, I haven't noticed people treating me any different. You know. Uh, I guess, you know, in terms of, you know, the sort of uh, deals that you can get done, like with gigs and things like that, you know, obviously that's different because it, it's not like uh, you're a kind of a brand name, like, you know, like a, an Iron Maiden sort of thing or something, you know. Um, but people don't treat me any different, you know. I mean, I find that I get just as much respect, in fact, probably more respect than, than I did before now, I'm, you know from people in, in the industry. Huh. So, how does it feel to be such an influence to up-and-coming musicians? Um, I, yeah, um, it's, um, uh, puzzling, I suppose. I, I mean, nice, I guess, but, um, uh, a bit baffling sometimes, you know, because I'm like, um, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, mate, it, 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 it's nice, you know, um, uh, I sometimes think that, uh, uh I, I, in a way, I don't want to lean too heavily on this idea of, uh, being an influence because, uh, uh, I'm, I, I hope that I, what I'm doing is still influencing people, if you, if you, you know, see what I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. because... As far as I'm concerned, I did a couple of decent records with Maiden, and the rest of them were were good, but they were, you know, not as as groundbreaking as the stuff that I did initially. And so, for me, you know, I'm I'm still looking to to move forward and uh, try and you know open people's eyes up, you know, as well as my own. Hmm. Uh, gotta ask this question: What did you ever worship the devil? <laughs> um, no, no, I, I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> uh, like the whole number of the beast thing, was that just, uh, you know, was there any, you know, deep uh, devotion or anything to the, uh, you know, the dark side or anything, or it's just... The dark side? <laughs> the dark side? Is that like the far side, but worse? <laughs> Um, uh, 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 I mean, I used to, I was one of those, I was one of those nerdy kids at school that used to hang out in the library, you know, like, <laughs> making up spells so that I could get laid, <laughs> you know, and it never fucking worked, <laughs> you know, so I just gave up, and the only way I ever got laid was basically, um, well, a couple of times by accident, you know, and then mainly by joining a rock and roll band. <laughs> you're, uh, you're into flying, I heard. Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. So do you, uh, do you fly a lot? Um, yeah, I mean, um, actually, the, the, the band, uh, they kind of, they, 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 they quite like it. I mean, because I, I quite often fly them around from, you know, in between gigs and stuff. Hmm. So, I mean, um, if I can, if it makes, uh, if it makes sense to do it, you know, like money-wise, and sometimes even if it doesn't make sense to do it, <laughs> we're just crazy and <laughs> we want to do it. You know, we, we're kind of like, like uh, rent an airplane and just like, um, just go somewhere rather than bounce around in the bus, you know. Hmm. So, do you skydive or bungee jump as well? No, although I, I do some, uh, I just started uh, doing aerobatics and shit, okay. which is like um, <laughs> pretty mad stuff, <laughs> you know, flying around, you know, spinning upside down and that kind of shit. What, what's the scariest thing that ever happened to you while you were in the air? Um... Oh, uh, well, it probably, um, probably when 
I was first learning to fly very, very, like, early, early on, like, when I was still a student pilot and I was doing, a, like, a, um, a long cross-country flight from Los Angeles to Las Vegas on my own. And I didn't even have a license yet. I just had, like, my provisional kind of student license stuff. And um, I got uh, <clears throat> I got myself all uh, messed up with some mountain turbulence and stuff. And uh, uh, for a few few moments there, I, I genuinely thought I was going to be a, a headline in, in a newspaper, you know. Um, but uh, uh, it, it was it, it was um, not as prob probably not as bad as I thought at the time. But at the time being pretty inexperienced it was pretty fucking terrifying <laughs> <laughs> so i've never really forgotten that you know um and um whether or not you know it doesn't matter how dangerous a situation really is it's how dangerous you believe it to be uh that's uh you know that's a measure of how scary it is you know and um more often than not the more scared you get the more panics you get, you know, the more likely it is that a not very dangerous situation will turn into a very dangerous situation. <laughs> so, you know, you try and keep your shit together, basically. <laughs> so, how do you reply to people that say fencing is a wimpy sport? Oh, um, uh, that's real easy to, uh, to, uh, talk them into, uh, talk them around to that proposition. Um, uh, if I've got any equipment to hand, I usually just strap on a mask and a few bits and bobs and say, okay, let's, let's see how you feel after about five minutes. <laughs> you know, we can, we can, uh, we can take great big muscle bodybuilding football players and reduce them to shreds after about uh, five, ten minutes fencing. Wow. <laughs> Are you familiar with the, uh, the O.J. Simpson trial that happened here in the United States? Um, uh, yeah, I am, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Did anyone tell you that you, with your new haircut, you look just like Cato Kaylin? Ah, oh, no, um, not anymore. It's even shorter. So oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I look like Cato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll kill you for that. <laughs> well, I saw your press photo, man. <laughs> Or do you like having short hair better than long hair? It's funny enough, yeah. I mean, it's really strange. I went and got it. I, I went and got it cut the other day, and I said to the guy, I said, "Look, I said, just fucking take off like shitloads." I said, um, "You know, um, why the hell not? You know, take take off some more." And I got home, and everybody went, "Wow, that looks really cool. That looks even better." And I'm like, oh, "Fuck, you know, <laughs> this is the shortest it's been since I was at school." You know. <laughs> Do you think that male smokers in England have trouble going into a store and asking for a pack of fags? Uh, no. Not in England, no. Uh, I guess if you were brought up in America and you had that kind of, you know, um, you know, that thing about fags being like homosexuals and all the rest of it, you know, you'd kind of get the a, a sort of serious giggles. But it's like, a, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really have the same connotation over here. I mean, it does, it's, but it's not, it's not used uh, that widely as a word. Hmm. So when you're here in the U.S., do you freak out when driving since uh, everything's on the opposite side of the road? No, not really, because I've done a lot of driving in Europe, and everything's on the opposite side of the road in Europe, too. So, you know, everything is... Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't take me long to get used to driving in the U.S. I mean, like about you know five minutes. <laughs> when I get in the get in the car, it's just like okay, it's on the opposite side, you know. So, uh, do you think England still has any resentment towards the U.S.? Um, yeah, there's always a kind of it depends which bits you go to and who you talk to, really. I mean, um, uh. I actually wonder if uh, if it's more the other way around these days. Hmm. You know, um, with uh, because uh, you know a, a lot of people in America kind of get uh, 
you know, I mean, basically in like Hollywood and all the rest of it, <clears throat> you know, they're forever making like, you know, shitty films like Braveheart, trying to dress them up as being like authentic and all the rest of it, you know. And uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, well, it's Hollywood, you know, but uh, I just wish that people wouldn't try to pretend that Hollywood fiction is uh, anything to do with like, you know, historical reality. <laughs> Do you miss Benny Hill? Do I miss Benny Hill? Yeah. Um, they don't show Benny Hill over here because he's like deeply politically incorrect. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because he's like sexist and, you know, all the rest of it. So they don't show him on TV. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, he's, he's kind of banned on TV over here pretty much. Wow. Um, but, um, yeah, he's pretty, kind of big in America. In, in England, he was always kind of regarded as being pretty, honestly, sort of fairly tacky. Hmm. Um, he, he, he was kind of like popular with, I never really was like crazy about Benny Hill, to be honest with you, you know. Um, uh, I mean, you know, you know, Monty Python, yeah, you know, that, that was kind of cool, but uh, Benny Hill, not, not especially. Hmm. So, uh, I know you're coming to New York in uh, August. Is there any other shows you're going to be doing around? No, we just did, we did CBGB's, and we're doing a show in LA at the Roxy, and we're doing, a, 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 like, two shows. We're doing a show in Cleveland, a show in Detroit. That's it. Um, we're pretty much coming in for just a real brief, um, you know, real brief period so people can see the band see what we're all about, uh, and then we can get on with um, doing a new record, which is going to be out before the summer, before next summer. Oh, cool. And at that point, that's when I anticipate that we'll come in and really make a big splash, trying to do some, uh, you know, some serious touring in America. Hmm. So if I go to that CBGB show, you're not going to kill me, are you? <laughs> um... No, not unless you particularly want to die. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> anyway, I can always call OJ. <laughs> yes. He doesn't have me. He's going to be out of a job soon, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think the difference is between a, a concert now and, say, an Iron Maiden concert? For yourself. For me? Uh... Now, for what, what I do now in Skunk Works, and, and the band is actually called Skunk Works now, so we, we're trying to get rid of this whole Bruce Dickinson thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, the concert now is, is, is very much about listening to the other guys in the band and interacting with them and um, really trying to make the whole thing much more of a, like a... Uh, an ex a musical thing, you know, I mean, when we were in Maiden, <clears throat> it was this big, like, megalomania trip, you know, everybody was in their own little world, hmm. and, uh, you know, like, you know, Nico was, Nico had his, like, huge amount of drums, you know, and he could hear Steve's bass because it was really loud, and Steve could hear his bass louder than everything else, and the two guitarists were at each, at each side of the stage, they couldn't hear each other because there was the bass and drums in between. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was just like in the middle and couldn't hear the guitars because I was in the middle of the war zone between the bass player and the drummer. Uh, and it was just really crazy because everything was really, really tight. <clears throat> but I'm not sure how much anybody really listened to what anybody else was playing. Ooh. You know, <clears throat> it was like... <clears throat> It was like, on your mark, get set, pow, let's go, you know. And if anybody made a mistake, you noticed it. Hmm. You know, like the way that you'd notice it if, you know, you're a football team and somebody made the wrong play. Mm -hmm. You'd notice that the team had made a wrong shape. But, you know, the way that Skunk works is, it's just a totally different philosophy of playing music. You know, there is no right and there is no wrong answer to playing every song every night. Every night is different. 
every song will be different every single night. Some nights it'll be terrible and some nights it'll be fucking brilliant. Mm. And that to me is more satisfying. Mm. So you prefer, the, you prefer the smaller venues to the larger ones? No, I prefer the biggest fucking venues <laughs> on the planet for <laughs> thousands and thousands of screaming fucking maniacs. <laughs> but <laughs> in the immediate future, that's not going to happen. So, you know, we play the smaller venues full of screaming maniacs. <laughs> Um, and it's not to say that I, you know, I mean, I don't mind doing it. It's great, but it's not where I want to be the whole of my life. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been uh, stalked or attacked by a crazed fan? Uh, no, but I haven't. I have attacked crazed fans before. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the funniest thing that ever happened to you while performing? Funniest thing that ever happened to me while performing. Um, <clears throat> goodness me. Um, well, recently, <laughs> uh, we were shooting a video for um, uh, a live video, which is going to be coming out. I, I don't know if it's coming out in the states, but it's coming out in Japan anyhow at the end of, or oh, I don't know, in two or three months' time. And we shot two shows in Spain. And um, after the, this kind of a long, long story, not that long, but anyhow, I'll do it anyhow. Um, <laughs> after the first show, which was in a place called Pamplona, some fucking asshole came backstage and stole my trousers. <laughs> right? Wow. Uh, my stage trousers. Which is kind of like amusing, except that I only had one pair of stage trousers. <laughs> oh, and they were kind of like really unique and we just shot a video and we were going to shoot another video the next night for safety and stuff mm. so the trousers i had to have a pair of trousers that would kind of look like leather but were you know and it was a sunday in the middle of this town called girona which is like just in the boonies <laughs> in spain and it's like where the fuck am i going to get a pair of skin tight leather look rock and roll trousers on a Sunday afternoon. So we were wandering around town all day looking for a pair of pants and there was and eventually we ended up with about twenty or thirty kids who were going to the show that night mm. in tow who all of who, who were all I was asking them all, I said, Look, where's the fucking place where people buy like rock and roll <laughs> shit in this town? There has to be one place, you know. And we found this place and all I could find was this pair of women's stretchy black PVC shiny <laughs> trousers <laughs> so I get this shit and I find the belt you know and I'm, we go on stage in these things and uh, I guess about I don't know when but the crotch completely split <laughs> and I didn't realize I just thought that I was sweating so much that the kind of crotch must have been kind of slippery because I had this sudden feeling of freedom around my balls. <laughs> and it was only when I looked down and the cameraman was laughing his ass off. <laughs> and he was pointing and I looked down and I went, oh, fuck. And I said, "Cross, my the whole front four rows was just getting a complete kind of preview of everything. <laughs> so that was kind of amusing. <laughs> So, was there a particular city that sticks out in your head that you just dreaded playing? A particular city? Yeah. Um, a particular city? Or a particular state or venue or just some place you just hated going to. Um, well, let me think here. Uh, probably, um, Regina in Canada. Hmm. Any particular reason? Well, just it was just pretty, pretty, bo- pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> just extremely boring. More, I think, probably you know, some of those kind of uh, places are so sort of like you know. 
agricultural. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. I guess they just uh, they just they just show up because it's better than um, you know digging up potatoes or something. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of a little bit strange as a you know as a as a musician that you know you want to show up and, and hopefully have an audience that's really passionate about being there, mm -hmm. and you ha instead you have an audience that's like passionate about not wanting to dig up potatoes that day, <laughs> and that's pretty weird. <laughs> uh, uh, do you listen to classical music? Uh, no, I, I don't listen to much classical music, no. Oh. I was just wondering if you had any insight, because it seems like a lot of musicians always refer to that as one of their influences. Oh, really? I was just curious, I mean, because I don't listen to classical music, I was just curious what, you know, the lore of that music is. No, I think a lot of musicians that do that are probably pretentious fucks, you know. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know, I mean, classical music, I mean, you know, I mean, look, music's like, hey, if you've got a good tune, you've got a good...